start here in Sand Rock, Alabama, with the 2A Player of the Year, Jacob St. Clair. And Jacob, what an incredible run you guys had all the way to the Final Four. You guys played your tails off this year. You seemed to get better and better as the season went on. But before we dive into this year and you winning Player of the Year, showing validation for all your hard work, let's rewind the clock. What's it been like growing up right here in, in playing at Sand Rock High School? Um, the whole community is very supportive because we're, we're a small town, small community, so everybody comes to the games. We always have a packed crowd. I mean, some games, you, there's not even a seat in the bleachers. So, I mean, it's, it's great having that, that supportive of a community. I know you guys do an incredible job, as you mentioned, with your crowd. You guys include the kids, the parents. It's not like it's a student section. Like, this entire gym's a student section during a game. Can you explain that to people? Because unless you've seen it with your own two eyes, you wouldn't understand what kind of atmosphere you guys have here. It's crazy. I just got chills as you mentioned it. But, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Just, we always interact with the kids so just to keep them involved. And uh, just, I don't know, it's just crazy. Hard now, to explain, really. Over the years, you guys have had some tremendous wars in this place and rivalries with people like Spring Garden and stuff. What's some of the games that's really stuck out to you? I know these are the Final Four in Jacksonville. had to be some of them. Uh, are you talking about games here? That's it, anywhere. Our my ninth grade year, and we played North Sand Mountain here. When uh, we was down, and then I passed the Cade. He hit a three. The whole crowd stands up, cheers. <laughs> I got a video of that. And that's God, that's crazy. I get chills every time I think about it. Just yeah, and you mentioned Cade. You know, we're here uh, on the eve of his signing. What's it been like playing with that guy? Because you guys are a deadly one-two combination, man, that not many people around the state have. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know. We both have our games. Uh, if I'm on, he knows to give it to me. If he's on, I know to give it to him. And it's really hard for teams to stop two that are that can score from anywhere on the floor. That's right. So uh, it just, just makes it tough on teams. And then when we both have our games on the, in the same game, we're pretty much guaranteed win. It's incredible to see you two guys play in, in the continuity you have. Talk about your coach. Now, he's very special, and a lot of people in Etowah County, where we're from, know him from coaching girls basketball, and he's a very dominant coach there. But tell us a little bit about your head coach. Uh, he's very supportive. Uh, he supports all of us, tries to teach us the right things on and off the court. Um, and that's, I couldn't have asked for a better coach throughout my high school years, so he's just he's great for all of us. What do you guys do in Sand Rock, Alabama, outside of sports? Uh, there's not much to do. We either have to go to the center or Gasden. Gotcha. Go 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 somewhere to hang out. Yeah. I didn't know if it was like a varsity blues or anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> do uh, not go watch that movie if you have it. Sometimes uh, <laughs> we'll come up to the gym and play, but yeah. Now that everybody's graduated, it's hard to get enough people up here. So you are in a special, unique situation. Um, a lot of people started really noticing you during the tournament run. You have not made your college selection yet. Some of the people we have interviewed have made some college selection. I know recruiting's a headache and getting into schools is a headache and things like that. But what are you looking for in a school? Because you just don't want to take just any offer and go anywhere. What's something that you're looking for? Like, okay, I, I like this. This makes me want to go there. Uh, I got to make sure the team's are right fit. So, I mean, that way I'll get to play some. Like uh, the style of play, that's a big contributor. And then my uh, – I just lost the word for it. Uh, my career, whatever. My degree. That's oh, yeah, what you want. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my degree, you got to make sure they have that. So that's a big big factor, too. Well, you're going to be a rocket scientist, so that's, they don't have that everywhere. I'm you're... not going to be a rocket scientist. <laughs> <laughs> what? No. Oh, yeah, yeah you are. <laughs> no, right, right now I'm probably leaning towards pharmacy. There you go. Yeah, I got a buddy of mine that went to Sanford and uh, became a pharmacist, and he really enjoys it. Shout out, Bucky. Um, now, let me ask you a few more questions here. What are some of the things that you know, and I've asked all the players of the years this question, what are some of the things that you know that you need to work on? And uh, self-evaluation. You know you know, you're really good at shooting the ball, handling the ball. Um, what are some of the things that you know you need to work on before you get to that next level? I'd say uh, defense and rebounding. That's the two main things because – during our high school, I didn't really have to play defense because we were in a zone and they were trying to protect me from getting fouls. So. Right. So not, not no man up stuff? <laughs> no, not really. We did every now and then, but we definitely run zone more. No doubt. Well, it's funny you say that because in today's game, it don't seem like the emphasis is always on defense. The offense can get you noticed. 
But it's funny you self-evaluate and know that because one of the first things that a college coach is going to look at is how well can he defend because you're going to be put on an island, can't hide nobody. So knowing that is huge, huge. Yeah. But you're also, according to my stats, one of the top five best three-point shooting percentage-wise in the state's history. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I'm fourth. All right. So the beautiful part about that is that's not out on every tree as well. So, and with your work ethic, I know we can get that done, obviously. Yes, um, what contributed to you shooting the basketball like you do? Oh, I mean, hours and hours. Uh, probably two or three hours a day, just me and Dad in here getting quality shooting in. Uh, when we come to the gym, it's also bonding time. My whole family comes, we hang out, make memories here. That's where we make most of our memories, actually. Hey, and you got a sister who's a heck of a ball player, too. Yes, uh, talk about her a little bit. Y'all got to have a little bit of competitive nature against each other. Uh, we're competitive, but she stopped playing me one on one and back in like fifth or sixth oh, grade. Oh, no. That ain't, so, uh, I'm talking about like her game versus your game. Oh, uh, Like if they beat somebody and y'all were to lose or vice versa. No, nah, we didn't really do that much. Y'all didn't talk no trash? No, nah, not really. I'd, first thing nah. I'd have said to her if I was you. <laughs> well, uh, we're both real supportive of each other and we're each other's biggest fans. So, so y'all did play one on one. No, we used to. Okay. I used to beat her. I used to give her like 15 or 20 point head start. <laughs> That's awesome. It reminds me, I did an interview with Haley Troop and Brady Troop, when, when, and, uh, and they were talking trash about it. And their dad, he, he, he was sitting beside them during the interview. He said, Hey, Haley wasn't relinquishing that. You know, she's like seven, eight player of the year, this, that, and other. And he said, They would literally fight. Throw the ball, hit each other in the face, and all that. And I said, "That's hilarious." Nah, we're real competitive, <laughs> but we're—it's a good competitive. It's not like me and Tony. That's so. good. Supportive, basically. Yeah. Um, before I let you go, what's some of the final thought you'd like to tell everybody from Sandlot that supported you during this whole situation and great career you've had here? I, mean, I just want to thank everybody. I mean, especially everybody in the community for coming out and supporting us, and that's that's huge because when we have a good atmosphere here, it makes us play better. We want to play better for the crowd and all the little kids. Just want to tell them to keep working. That way they can do it one day. So. 100%. Love it, man. I appreciate you taking time out. And as always, uh, this is our Player of the Year interviews that we're doing across the board. And, and we had to get out here and see you. I'm trying to do them in order. I had to jump ahead to the Supreme Court at your uh, Shooter's Paradise the other day. But yeah. back on track now. And I appreciate your time, sir. And let's go watch your man sign his letter of intent. Thank yes, you, sir. sir.